Claw Code is one of the best coding agents that we've seen, but there was one big problem. It is really too expensive. With the pro plan of 17 bucks per month, we we'll get limited usage and oftentimes we have to get asked to be upgraded to the max plan. But in this video, we're going to solve this by checking out this new model called GLM 4.6, which they claim to have the same performance as the Claw Code Sonic 4. But not only that, with the GLM coding lights only $3 per month, we get access to the GLM 4.6, which is compatible with all kinds of coding tools like Claw Code, Root Codes, and so much more. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to set this up, how to use it inside of our Claw Code to basically code up a simple coding project to see how good it is and is it worth it to switch from Claw Code to use GLM if you're on a budget. So with that being said, if you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so before we jump in, a quick intro for those who are new here. My name is Eric and I have spent years as a senior software engineer at companies like Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft. And I have started this YouTube channel to share everything I have learned along the way from AI encoding to automations, Web3, career developments, and more, all broken down into practical tutorials that you can actually follow. So if you're ready to level up, make sure to check out my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get back to the video. All right, so to get started, first thing first, we're gonna to navigate to the z.ai slash subscribe. And here you can see that we're presented with the GLM coding plan. So we're just gonna choose the lowest tier, or in this case, the coding lights from GLM. And here you can see that we have subscribed to this already, which is only $3 per month, but we are getting the GLM 4.6 and also compatible with all the coding tools like Claw Code, Rue Code, and so much more. So in this case, we're just gonna to subscribe to this. And once we subscribe to this, we also need to download Claw Code and be able to use Claw Code for the GLM user interface so that we can use our GLM inside of a claw code. And here you can see that this is the command that we're gonna run inside of our terminal. So we're just gonna install this globally inside of our local machine for claw code. So that's gonna be our user interface to use our GLM coding model here. So in this case, we're just gonna to navigate to a terminal right here inside of a root directory, and we're just gonna install this globally inside of our local machine. So once we have this installed, we're just gonna open our folder inside of our root directory, which here you can see that this is what we have inside of our root directory for our all the files and folders. So in this case, what we need to do here is we need to change what we have inside of a claw.settings file to basically use the GLM model instead of the Claude model itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the command shift dot or command shift period, which will show all the hidden files and folders inside of our root directories here. So here inside of our root directories, you can see that we have a folder called dot claw folder. So we're just gonna open that and change the settings inside of it. All right, so here you can see that inside of the VS code here, I have opened dot claw folder. And inside here, we have our settings.json, which is what we're gonna change. So we're gonna set the environment variable for the anthropic default uh, models for the Opus, Sonnet, and also the Haiku, we're gonna change that to use the GLM models here. So in terms of Sonnet and Opus, we're gonna use the 4.6, and also the Haiku here, we're just gonna use the 4.5 Air instead. So once we set these things, once we have all these things uh, set, we're just gonna save this, and now what we can do is we can be able to use this inside of a project. So we're gonna navigate to a project we're trying to build here, basically trying to take a YouTube video and try to download the audio for the YouTube video and try to use like Google Cloud or any other speech to text and transcribe the audio to text. So simply here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this command right here to start our claw code using the GLM API key. So here you can see that this is the environment variable we're gonna set for the base URL. And here you can see we also have set the auth token, which is basically the API key for the ZAI here. All right, so to get the API token, simply we're just gonna to navigate to the Z.AI and here we're just gonna click on API keys. Inside of this, we're just gonna click on create a new API key and I'm just gonna name this to be video to text. So we're just gonna confirm this. And then here you can see that we get a API key, which here we're gonna copy this. And then here we're just gonna replace this our off token with the API key here. And here you can see that we're using the claw command to start our claw session. Now, because I also prefer the YOLO mode from claw code, so I also have set a tag here for dangerously skip permission. So here I'm just gonna run this. And here you can see that we have our claw code session started. And then here inside of a claw code, you can see that currently it says label here, it says GLM 4.6. So we're currently using the GLM 4.6 model inside of claw code. And we can also be able to see the API usage built inside of a console. So if we were to navigate to the console.anthropic.com slash usage, and here you can see that we don't have any uh, consumption yet because I have never used the API usage inside of claw code. All right, so now if we were to test to see if it's working, I can simply be able to use like all the slash commands or all the AI agents that we had before, right? Currently, I don't have any agents inside of this directory, but if we were to add one, we can simply be able to use it inside of claw code. 
So in this case, if I were to say simply hi, and let's see what it responds here. So it says, hello, how can I help you today? So pretty much you can see that the GLM 4.6 model is working instead of clock code. So now let's try to test it to build our application here, right? So what we're gonna do is inside of our projects, so you can see here we have our video to script project here, and inside of the explorer for the files, I have created a project context, which is basically the PRD file for this project. And basically the goal is we wanted to take a YouTube video and take that audio for that YouTube video and transcribe it into text. So simply, these are all the key features we have, or the speech text, um, high accuracy, and also the language detections, and so much more. So this is basically the technical architecture on how we're going to create this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the PRD file, which is the project context, and pass it to the GLM here, and basically try to do the implementation. And notice here that I'm using the plan mode to basically plan the implementation before the execution. So we're just going to implement this, and let's see what it does. So here you can see that it creates a cloud plan for implementation. And here you can see we have different phases for the project foundations, set of the configurations, uh, the requirements.txt file for the dependencies, right? So these are all the things that we're gonna install before we going to run the projects. There's also core components like the enhanced audio downloader, the language detections, and so much more, right? So we're just gonna have the um, GLM here to build this thing. So, and then pretty much we have everything good to go. So what we can do is we can just say yes and bypass permissions to see the GLM 4.6 here to build this project entirely from scratch. Now, while we're building this, I also want to share my take on this product for the GLM 4.6. So I would definitely say that performance here is definitely not up to par compared to the latest model from Sonnet 4.5. But in terms of the performance here, it's definitely going to be very similar to the Claude Sonnet 3.7 and also Claude Sonnet 4. But in terms of the budget here, it's going to be a lot cheaper compared to the Claude because it's only $3 per month and you pretty much get the performance of the Sonnet 3.7 or Sonnet 4. Right, so in terms of who is it for, I would say that if you're or on a budget and trying to use AI to code, then this product is definitely for you. So feel free to give it a try. So now you can see that the implementation is fully built. So let's try to take a look at what this project looks like. So here you can see that I have on, I'm on the readme file here. Basically it lists out the features and also the headline for this project. So it's gonna be a command line tool to transcribe the YouTube videos to text using the Google Cloud speech to text API with the intelligence language detections. And here you can see it also shows you the quick start. So this is the prerequisite for this uh, project. Like he's are, these are the things that we need to install and there's also the installations so we're going to clone this repositories if you're going to use this in a, a github repository you're going to clone this cd into it and also create a virtual environment here and then be able to activate the virtual environment install all the dependencies and continue from there so here you can see that's going to be using the google cloud setups and then here inside of the readme file here you can see that we're using the google cloud setup here for this project so we activate the speech to text and also download the service account key and also be able to use that inside of the environment variable. So I have already downloaded this for the credential.json file and basically import it inside of the .env file. So here inside of the .even.example file, I basically show the path inside of my .env file. So if you're gonna set this up, you're gonna do something similar. And then here you can see if we were to continue, this is how we can be able to use this application, right? To transcribe the automatic language detections by simply just pass the uh, video link and also the command here to basically run this. And then there's also the advanced usage like how we can be able to output the different directories or be able to do like language selections or different um, transcription service and so much more, right? All right, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open my terminal and here you can see I have activated the environment. So CD into the virtual environment here already. And then basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this command and transcribe a video that I have. And now if you wanna run this, you can see uh, we get an error. So basically you can see that it says that we're not able to fetch the correct video for the information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass this error onto the claw code GLM 4.6 and let it do the fix. So here you can see, navigate back to the terminal for the GLM I already have done so. Paste the logs here and have the GLM here to do the fix. And let's wait for a bit until it fully fix here. All right, so now you can see that the GLM 4.6 here has already done the fix, has identified the issue. And I was using the plan mode here to basically have it to plan out before it does the fix. So it seems like it has able to call this API uh, endpoint and it's able to get some data here. So it looks correct. And let's see if this time we're getting the same issue. So I'm just going to run the same command here to basically download this video. So currently it's trying to fetch the video information and it's now moving on to the step two, which is to download the audio. And then once the audio is downloaded here, you can see that we're moving on to step three, which is detecting the spoken language. So here you can see that it has successfully detected that it's spoken in English. And then it move on to step four, which is to transcribe the audio content. So here you can see that it's gonna pass the audio 
to the Google Cloud to be able to transcribe the audio uh, into text, which here you can see that it breaks down the audio file into multiple chunks, but because one file here can be very large, so that there's a limitation on how much input size for the Google Cloud in terms of the audio file. So we're gonna break it down into 16 chunks, and here you can see that for each chunks, we're gonna send it to the Google Cloud here to be able to transcribe it. And at the end of it, you can see that we have the full audio transcriptions fully finished. And here you can see that we have the transcription finished, cleaned up for the temporary files and everything is done. All right, so in this case, to take a look at the transcript, we simply just navigate to the output and click on the transcript. There is gonna be our transcript right here. So here you can see we have our text file, which contains the full transcript of the video that I just made, which is the OpenAI Agent Kit tutorial. And here you can see that we have break it down into different chunks, right? So basically the audio is gonna be very large, right? So we're gonna break it down into 17 chunks and then send it to the Google Cloud here to transcribe it. And once it transcribe it, it's gonna append it to this text file. And here we we have our 16 uh, chunks right here, which all combine into one text file. You can see that with just a couple prompts, we can be able to use GOM 4.6 model here to build our full application all from scratch. So pretty much that's the review for using the GOM 4.6 model here to build an applications and test out its performance. If you're interested to try out GOM, you can use the link in the description below to try it out. But with that being said, if you found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.